I am Job Sihiro, a cultural vulture and the PR Rondola Cultural Development Association. Please come with me as I unveil the history, culture, and tradition of Ndola people. <laughs> Ndola is a tribe found in the northeastern part of Nigeria which houses several other tribes apart from the major Hausa Fulani. There is something exceptional about Ndola people in Taraba state as they have a very unique cultural heritage. The Ndola people are scattered across five local government areas of Taraba state. Bali, Donga, Gashaka, Kurmi and Sadauna local government area. Ndola people are largely found in Kurmi and Gashaka local government area. In Kurmi, they live together with Tigun and Inche tribes, while in Gashaka, they live together with Jibo, Fulani and other tribes as well. At the moment, Ndola people have Kurmi. Gashaka local government areas and the Ngada special development area as their most dominant land in Taraba state of Nigeria. Since the split of Bantu Kingdom, they lived in this area for over 1,000 years. The Ndola people have a very large population. They are also found in Dodio, Atamoa region in Cameroon, and their population is estimated about 4,000. The majority of Ndola people are farmers living in mountainous and lowland regions of Taraba state who cultivate cash crops like tea and granuts. They also cultivate a lot of food crops like maize, rice, millet, bene seeds, and cassava in commercial quantities. They have a regular tradition of clearing the forest for farming every year and mostly beginning from November before the rainy season begins. The lands where the Ndola people are found are considered fertile enough. Therefore, Ndola farmers do not need fertilizer or wheat sprayers for farming purposes. During harvest, the maize is stored in a wood called Sena, built within the farm or at homes. It is the best and most efficient farm produce preservation method for Ndola people. No chemicals needed to preserve the farm produce. Farm produce can be kept there towards another season of farming. It is fetched bit by bit and women fries it after peeling and grind it with a grinding stone into corn flour ready to be used for cooking for the family. This has been their way of life till death in some remote areas. Ndola people are the major producers of red palm oil in large quantities for exportation. In Nigeria, palm oil is an essential ingredient for cuisine and also used for the production of some household items. Globally, palm oil is used in almost 50% of supermarket products. It is largely produced in Africa and Asia with millions of families relying on the industry. Oh, 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 oh. 
until the arrival of Christianity and Islam. Ndola people knew no other religion aside the African traditional religion, in which they believe and worship their own deity or ancestral spirit called Anna. This belief is solely predicated on the spirit of their dead ancestors. They strongly believe in it with an unalloyed trust that such spirit guide their daily activities by giving them bumper harvest, good health, and bring about death. Another interesting thing about Ndola people and their religious beliefs is the consciousness of God, the creator of man and the universe. They believe Anna is their protector on earth and believe that God in heaven is the owner of Our culture is like when a child is born, after three months, they will take him to listen. The forest. They take him to forest just to initiate him in our own mission. Then from there, after 15 years, then they will take him inside the forest. They will initiate him fully. There are several traditional rites and ceremonies of Ndola people which are practiced over the ages and are still being maintained till date. Among them are Zaka, Anzora, Bala Festival, Bantuna. Zaka is a seven day ceremony done at the beginning of every harvest season. This ceremony is always likened to the tithes of harvest usually taken to churches by Christians. Generally, Ndola people have the consciousness of, of Supreme God in heaven called Amama or Amam Kabere, meaning God in heaven. Within these seven days, women will cook and also prepare a locally brewed wine called Nga Iga Burkutu. For the people, they will dance each day and make merriment. No one is allowed to use any form of footwear during the dance and in that ground women are not allowed to wear earrings during that period as a sign of respect to the gods part of their harvested crops are taken to the shrine as sacrifice to the gods to bless the remaining crops at the end of the seventh day all the women will gather and face towards the road leading to the shrine and ask for forgiveness of any sin that may hinder them from receiving blessings we call it Bun Tuna because there is a town called Tuna and it is also called Bun Ndola. The dance is unique and performed by Ndola people. It can be danced by community people or Ana the Goss. It can be performed for merriment mourning or remembrance of the dead. During the remembrance, locally brewed wine are presented while the Bantuna takes place to remember the dead. During those old good days, it started with our forefathers where we came from before it came to Baisa. Bala is a masquerade cultural performance performed by men accompanied by drummers and indigenous women who use their mellow voices to harmoniously sing various and creative praise epithets and songs to and about you. We have the Bala, which is a, a culture 
always performed sometimes in March and April. It is celebrated just to evoke our ancestors for a heavy rainfall. Then secondly, praying for a bumper harvest and praying for a life sustenance within the year. The performance itself is unique in each particular manifestation because it is not just a dance or festival, but a performance that tells the story of their lives and what they believe in. Similar to many indigenous masquerade festivals in Nigeria, the Bala dance is not open to female spectators. Any female presence near the vicinity of Bala meets with punishment, typically flogging by the masquerade. Bala itself also serves as an emblem that tells one about the identity of Ndola man. He believes in the utility of land as a factor of production. The fertility of land is of prime importance since good yield is the ultimate aim of all forms of farming activity. The force behind the fertility of land and people is recognized and entreated to be prevalent on mortals. The celestial terrestrial relationship in African worldview is often a constant. The process of oil in the relationship is what culminates into Bala festival. On the non sacred plane, it is sometimes performed in social events such as festive occasions marked by parades and sometimes entertainment, seminars, workshops, or wedding anniversaries. The outing often places emphasis on the indigenous values of the host community. Before the arrival of the Sudan United Mission of North America and Germany, who made contact with the Ndola people via present Kurmiluku government in its headquarters in Baisa, Bala performance was vastly practiced in all Ndola communities. Today, majority of the people are now Christians, few with Muslims and traditionalists. Well, since ages, before I was born, I met Anzora. Anzora, it goes to a woman. When you married a woman uh, in Dola, she has marital status with somebody outside the married area where she is to her husband. If our ancestors, that is Juju, decided to punish her, they punish her through the children. This is where you will know that she has committed adultery. Now she had to cook what we call Mu'ela in Dolalan, in Dola language, Mu'ela. They will take you to the ancestors and tell them the offenses so that she will be forgiven and the child will live and the mother. That is what is called Anzora. It's made in a porridge, made of porridge, and then carried to the ancestors early in the morning and they will appease the woman and her child. In the olden days, if a married woman is getting sick or always gets sick, and maybe her children always die, her parent goes for spiritual consultation to know if she had an extramarital affairs. And if it happens that she had such affairs, she must go for the Anzora cleansing. Ndola people know themselves by the clans they came from. These clans are born from the same offspring of genealogy, meaning they are from the same parents. Due to birth and expansion of the Ndola nation, they became classified based on clans as they began to grow in numbers. This was the easiest way to identify themselves. There are eight clans of the Ndola people and these clans include Mon Bora, Mon Shibra, Mon Jebala, Mon Nangana, Mon Tadema, Mon Tega, Mon Dola, Mon Yapera.
as we were told and also experienced. There was blood covenant between four clans out of the eight clans of the Ndola people. The blood covenant was between the Mon Bora, Mon Shipra, Mon Nangana, Mon Jebala. In any case of spiritual attack on any member of the four clans out of the eight clans, a member out of the four clans can save any member of the four clans if there was any spiritual attack. This is the covenant we had with the four clans. One dollar man or woman must fall in any of these eight clans. For the dollar people, being in any of these eight clans, tell your brothers and sisters where you are coming from, what you can do and what you cannot do. It is a natural identity of the Ndola people. Every clan have their uniqueness in terms of marriage, rites or rituals and other public functions. If you love a woman and she loves you, you can go for blood or by cutting her body and taking the blood while she does sin. If you are not careful, this will be a problem to you in the future if any one of you breaks the promise. In such case, where the two or one among the lovers breaks the promise, you all can go to the custodian of the culture for breaking of the blood oath, which is known as Mungwa in Ndola. This breaking of the oath involves some ritual performances and processes. However, Ndola people are very peaceful and hospitable. Hardly will one hear about any news of dispute between them and any other people.